So once again, good afternoon everyone. So today pag-uusapan natin dalawang topics, parehas na pricing decision. The first one is uh, transfer pricing. So ang transfer pricing, ito yung pricing decision wherein yung transaction natin ay between the divisions in an organization. So meron tayong selling division, ito yung magbebenta papunta kay buying division ng items na yan. Pero yung selling and buying division ay within the same umbrella or under the same company. So ang tanong ngayon sa transfer pricing, ano yung transfer price or by how much natin i-charge yung yung buying division kumaga how much it's a charge ni selling division yung buying division for the for the goods and services na ililipat niya sa kanya okay so that is what we call transfer price that is the amount that we set or we charge when one division sells goods or services to another division again ang transaction ay within the organization Mamaya, yung pag-uusapan natin after this is pricing decision. Ito naman yung uh, pag-set natin ng price na papunta naman sa ating outside market. Okay? So medyo magkaiba kasi ng approach ng dalawa. Maraming similarities pero may konting pagkakaiba. Number one, yun nga, the transaction will take place within the organization. At ang objectives po ng transfer pricing ay itong tatlo na yan. Okay, number one is to facilitate optimal decision making. In the first place kasi, sa transfer, uh, talaga bang dapat magkaroon ng transfer? Kasi itong si buying division, uh, ang general na story niya, meron siyang kailangan ng materials or service na pwede niya ma-acquire din outside. Ngayon, instead of acquiring outside, yung materials or service na yon ang nangyayari, ay yung selling division, yung isang division within the company, siya na yung magsusupply kay buying division. Ngayon ang tanong, at what price natin iseset yan in such a way na talagang the entire organization will benefit from that? Tapos na-mention din natin dito, to provide a basis in measuring divisional performance. Last week or last month rather, we already uh, watched the video on responsibility accounting. So sabi natin, ang isang organization kapag malaki talaga yan, mahirap i-manage yan ng, uh, using the centralized form of management. Mas okay siya sa decentralized wherein you divide the company into different divisions tapos, yung top management, dinadelegate sa middle management or lower level management yung mga decisions. Now, eto na yung, uh, uh, dito may kinalaman yung transfer pricing. Kasi, dalawang divisions na pinag-uusapan, yung selling division, which is a profit center, tapos yung buying division, anong klaseng center naman siya? Siya ay yung cost center. Magkakaroon sila ng transaction. Ngayon, si selling division or yung profit center, ang objective niya is to maximize the profit. Si buying division naman is to minimize the cost. Ngayon, kung magbebenta sa selling division, papunta kay buying division, Siyempre, magkaiba silang na objective. Gustong-gustong magbenta ni selling division na mataas kasi yung performance niya mabibase kung gaano kalaking profit yung magagawa niya. Kaso ang customer niya ngayon ay buying division within the same company na hindi niya magawa mataasan ng husto kasi si buying division naman gusto niya makatipid as much as possible. So magkakontra yung kanilang uh, objectives. Ngayon, sa transfer pricing, isa sa mga objectives nito is to provide a basis in measuring the divisional performance. Hindi lang ma-measure and ma-manage pa and ma-improve pa yung performance sa mga departments na yan. Kaya nga sabi rito sa number three, to motivate the different department heads in improving their performance and that of their departments. Okay. Now, ano ba yung transfer price na tinutukoy natin? Or TP. Ang transfer price ay equal sa yung additional outlay cost plus yung opportunity cost natin. Bakit nagkaroon ng opportunity cost? Kasi si selling division, ayan, saka si buying division. Si selling division naman, ang story niya, pwede naman sa magbenta outside, di ba? Pero, ang nangyari, because of the transfer, ibebenta niya kay buying division. If that would happen, yung mga items na binibenta niya outside, dapat kumikita na siya doon. 
Ano yung kinikita niya? Di ba? May selling price ka. May variable cost ka. Meron siyang contribution margin per unit na sa mga nabibenta niya outside. Ngayon, since inilipat niya kay buying division, may opportunity cost na, which is the contribution margin. Bakit hindi natin minus yung fixed cost? We are assuming na yung fixed cost na yan, whether itong selling division, magbenta outside or inside the organization, ma-incur pa rin niya yung fixed cost. So it will not really matter in the decision. So going back, so kung yung mga binibenta ni selling division outside ay mapipilita na i-transfer inside, meron po tayong opportunity cost. Okay? At dapat makonsider yun when coming up with the transfer price na siniset natin. Okay? Pero possible din naman si selling division. Wala, meron siyang uh, binibenta outside pero nung umorder si buying division, hindi na magagalaw yung mga binibenta niya outside. In that case, wala naman tayong opportunity cost. Okay? Pero para mas ma-establish natin yung formula natin, ang transfer price is equal to the variable cost. Ito, lagyan natin na asterisk. Because ito yung variable cost na kapag nag-take uh, nag place yung transfer. Plus, the opportunity cost. Sabi natin kanina, yung selling price minus the variable cost. Wala ng asterisk. Because this one is the original na variable cost because uh, na magiging part ng computation ng opportunity cost natin. This is the original. Ito naman, the variable cost when the transfer will really take place. Okay. So mga transfer pricing problems, we just have to first uh, uh, identify kung ano ba yung condition. Meron tayong tatlong conditions dito. Yung isa, with excess capacity. Yung isa, no excess capacity. Yung isa, may excess pero insufficient. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Halimbawa, si selling division. Ang capacity ni selling division, oops, brain lang natin sa bit. Ang capacity ni selling division ay 100,000 units. Okay? Right now, ang operations niya, nakakapagbenta siya ng 60,000 units. So may excess po siya ng, ilan excess niya? 40,000. Ayan. Ngayon, si buying division, kailangan niya ng 25,000 units of that items. Kailangan niya. So, ibig sabihin, kapag umorder siya ng 25,000, ano mangyayari sa, sa meron ba tayong opportunity cost? Set up natin. Transfer price is equal to variable cost plus your opportunity cost which is actually your, natin, your selling price minus your variable cost as well. Ang tanong, may opportunity cost ba? The answer is, wala. Bakit? Kasi ito ay idle capacity. Walang mawawala kay selling division kung ililipat niya ito kay buying division. Therefore, looking at the equation, TP will now be equal to the variable cost. Ang variable cost natin dito ay 8 pesos. Okay? Ibig sabihin, kapag may excess capacity ka naman pala, okay na na, ano, na inventa mo kay buying division. Buying division division yan at least with the variable cost. And that is what we call the minimum transfer price. Okay? Bakit minimum uh, transfer price? Selling division po ang nagsaset ng minimum transfer price. Hindi naman pwedeng below 8 kasi lugi naman si uh, selling division. Bawa, bebenta niya yan ng 7 kay buying division. Lugi po. Kaya ang minimum transfer price ay at least yung cost na na incur ni uh, ba, ni selling division. Ayan, sorry, may tumawag na konti. And, yun, so going back here, dito naman tayo sa no excess capacity. So ang capacity po natin ay 100,000. Pero lahat-lahat po ng items na yan ay napuproduce at nabibenta natin in the market. So therefore, wala po tayong excess. Kapag umorder ng 25,000 units si buying division, mapipilitan si selling division na kumuha out of the sales na nagagawa outside ni selling division. Di ba? So with that, meron na tayong opportunity cost. Kaya ang transfer price mo is equal to variable cost plus SP minus, oops, minus your variable cost. Ayan. And this time it's not zero. So transfer price is equal to 8 plus 
20 minus 8. Ang answer ay 20. Kung mapapansin mo, siya rin yung selling price. So, gano'n pala yun. Kapag no excess capacity, ang logic dito, kung ibebenta ng selling division kay buying division yan, dapat kung magkano ko binebenta yan sa labas, ganun ko din ibebenta ngayon sa'yo para hindi maapektuhan yung performance ko bilang selling division or bilang profit center. Yun yung idea kung bakit selling price ang minimum transfer price if there is no excess capacity. Okay. Now, itong pangatlong scenario natin with excess pero insufficient. Ibig sabihin, ang capacity po natin ay 100,000. Ang nabibenta natin outside ng operations natin ay umaabot ng 90,000. Meron naman tayong excess na 10,000 units. Pero ang order ni buying division ay 25,000 units. Ano mangyayari dito? Yung 10,000 units, wala po tayong opportunity ko. Sama, pero may kulang po na 15,000 units. At kung magmangyayari yung transfer price, kukunin natin yung 15,000 dito sa 90,000. Ngayon, magkano ang transfer price natin? So transfer price will be equal to variable cost plus SP minus VC. Ito yung opportunity cost. Pero po, pansinin natin, ang opportunity cost natin, hindi lahat ng units may opportunity cost. Ilan lang ang may opportunity cost sa atin? 15,000, di ba? Ilan ba yung order 25,000. Ayan. So yung 15,000 over 25,000, imumultiply natin sa opportunity cost para ma-prorate po natin yung opportunity cost sa lahat ng units na, na 25,000 na in-order ni buying division. Ang lalabas po sa atin dyan, variable cost ay 8 plus 20 minus 8 or 12 times 15 over 25. Sige nga. So... 15 over 25 times 12, ayan, plus 8. So, ang answer, correct, 15.20. So, yun yung transfer price natin kapag may excess, pero insufficient po yung excess capacity natin. So, ah, kung mapapansin mo po, ang 15.2 ay nasa gitna or pagitan ng 8 at saka ng 20. Kasi kapag ganun po, talagang uh, ang minimum transfer price or ang transfer price naman talaga ay makikita mo between the variable cost and the selling price. May, ipang, may other way of computing this one. Di ba sabi natin, for the first 10,000, yung 10,000 natin may, may opportunity cost, actually wala, di ba? Kaya be, pwede mo siyang ibenta ng 8 pesos lang. Ito 10,000. So, pag binenta mo yan, 80,000. Yung 15,000, may opportunity cost. Kaya dapat ibenta mo siya ng 20 pesos. Okay? Magkano po ito pag binultiply? 300,000. Yan. So, pag tinotal po natin yan, that would be 380,000. Didivide po natin ang ilang units sa pinag-usapan natin? 25,000 units. Pag dinivide po natin, ang 380 with 25,000, that would also be... 15.20. Okay? So, yun yung dalawang ways natin to compute for the transfer price kapag with excess pero insufficient. Pero to summarize, kapag may excess tayo ang transfer price, hanapin mo lang sa problem kahit gano'ng kahaba yan, hanapin mo lang yung variable cost. Pero kapag no excess capacity, dapat para fair enough for selling division, hanapin mo yung selling price. Yung selling price niya. Okay? Because as far as selling division is concerned, papayag lang ako na matransfer yan. Kung no excess capacity, dapat equal sa bentahan ko niyan sa labas. Pero kapag may excess pero insufficient, ano gagawin natin? Recompute natin. Because we have to allocate yung opportunity cost with all the units na in order ng buying division. So kung alin na mas madali sa'yo, Sa so, dalawang ways na to, yun po ang gamitin mo sa pag-compute ng transfer price. Okay. Let's move to the next. Ayan. There are times na, halimbawa sa si selling division o yung point of uh, reference natin. Sa si selling division, uh, yung outside market na binibenta niya ng mga products niya, 
ay nandito lang sa Metro Manila. Nandito rin yung office nila. Nandito rin yung warehouse. Ngayon, yung buying division pala ng company ay nasa Mindanao. So kung magkakaroon ng transfer, posible na magkaroon ng additional cost. ba? Diba? Dahil ang layo ng Mindanao from Luzon. So dapat na binibenta niya sa, uh, sa Metro Manila rather. Dapat sa Metro Manila niya binibenta. Ngayon binibenta niya sa Mindanao, magkakaroon ng additional cost ng company. So what will happen to the transfer price if that's the case? So ganun pa rin po scenario natin. Ang transfer price natin will be variable cost plus SP minus VC. Ang tanong muna, may excess capacity ba? Wala. Ay meron pala, meron with excess. Ibig sabihin ng with excess, di ba napakita na natin kanina, ibig sabihin hindi magagalaw yung binibenta niya outside. This is zero. Pero di ba may asterisk to? Kasi kaya may asterisk yan because that would be 8 plus 2. Ganun lang siya kasimple. 10 pesos ang transfer price natin. So kapag ang haba-haba ng problem at nakita mo na may excess capacity naman siya ng transfer price ay equal lang sa variable cost, this time, mas tandaan na natin na naka-asterisk. Kung may additional cost, ia-add mo lang. Okay? Kapag no excess capacity, ano yung tsura niya? So TP is equal to variable cost asterisk plus SP minus VC. This time, hindi na to zero. Ha? So that would be 10 yung VC asterisk natin, right? Plus 20 minus, ano yung VC dito? Yung original po natin. So that would be 10 plus 20 minus 8. So magkano ang transfer price natin? That is 22. Kung mapapasin mo, transfer price is your selling price plus whatever na additional cost. Ganon din po dito, di ba? Kung may additional cost din. Kung ano yung transfer price mo, yung selling price mo kanina, 20 plus 2. Ganon lang pala siya. Ang dami lang sinasabi ng mga formula, pero that's the shortcut. Ang logic nun, kung ililipat ko sa'yo, wala namang excess selling price. Kung may madadagdag na cost, i-shoulder mo kasi ililipat ko sa'yo. So 22 ang sagot dito. Dito sa pangatlo, transfer price will be uh, VC asterisk plus SP minus VC. Okay? Same given po nung kanina. So VC asterisk is 10 plus 20 minus 8. Tapos multiply natin ng 15,000 over 25,000 kasi ito yung merong opportunity cost. Okay? Ang numerator, yung may opportunity cost, hindi yung excess. Ha? So that would be 20 minus 8 times 15 over 25 plus 10. So yung answer mo ay 17.20. But have you noticed, kanina, pag bumalik tayo, 15.20. Nung nagkaroon lang na additional cost, nagcompute pa tayo pero plus 2 lang pala kung may initial na tayo na nagcompute before. Okay? But anyways, Sa problem naman, uh, kung talagang uh, isa lang naman yung tanong, you'll go with this formula talaga. Kung gusto mo i-check ulit, using the longer formula, pwede naman po. Yung hinihiwalay mo yung may opportunity cost sa walang opportunity cost, ganun din po yun. Balik lang po tayo dito. The reason, ito po ang binilugan ko yung didiscuss ko. The reason bakit hindi natin ninegotiate na dalawang transfer price ang isa-set natin is nakakalito po yun. Siyempre, i-average na lang po natin yan. Sasabihin natin ka ba yung division na for all the units, ito transfer namin yan at 15.20. Hindi naman pwede na, oh, for the first 10,000, 8 muna. And then for the next 15,000, 20 pesos. Hindi na. Give the entire 25,000 units and charge it at 15.2 per unit and that would be the same in total. Okay? So, yan. Ito po yung condition na lumayo yung buying division, nasa malayo rather. Itong pangalawa naman, cost save, 1 peso per unit. Bakit nagkakaroon ng savings? Possible, binibenta mo sa Metro Manila before, pero this time, ang buying division mo nasa ground floor lang, o kaya nasa kabilang pinto lang. So with that, possible na may masave ka naman talaga na some cost. Ngayon, kahit hindi na tayo mag-compute ng todo, with excess capacity, that would be variable cost asterisk kasi walang uh, uh, opportunity cost. That would be magkano? 7 pesos. 8 minus 1. Diba? May nasave kasi. Pag no excess capacity, TP is equal to magkano selling, diba dapat, sabi natin, selling price. 
Pero may na-save. So dapat 19 pesos yan. So, na, pag nire-compute, 7 plus 20 minus 8. Oh, original to ha. So, the answer is 12 plus 7. That would be 19. With excess but insufficient, transfer price is 14.20. Saan so, galing? May na-save na piso. Mag-recompute tayo kasi what if hindi natin alam yung 15.2. So that would be transfer price is equal to 7 plus 20 minus 8 times 15,000 over 25,000. So ang answer mo pa rin dyan ay 14.20 or 14.2. Okay? Kaya pag transfer pricing ang mga problems, ako personally gusto, gusto ko yung transfer, transfer pricing kasi pag nakita ko kagad na with excess, yun agad, busy na. Lagi na lang as risk. Check ko lang yung problem, meron bang na-save o nadagdag na cost. Okay? So, ganun lang lagi. Kapag transfer price ang tanong, minimum, sulitin natin ha, minimum transfer price. Bakit tinawag natin minimum transfer price? Kasi sa selling division, syempre, dapat, pag nilipat ko sa iyo yan, ito ang minimum na price na pwede na hindi ako malulugi. Okay? Ayan. Pag-usapan lang natin yung usapang minimum and maximum. Kasi kung may, may minimum, syempre may maximum din yan. Approaches in determining the transfer price. We have the cost-based transfer price. Ito ay nangyayari kapag may idle capacity. Kung mapapansin mo, pwede siyang i-base sa variable cost or syempre kung may iba pang mga changes, makakasama po siya sa consideration ng computation natin. Market-based transfer price. Ito naman kapag uh, operating at capacity. No? Pag at capacity, syempre dapat usapang market price or market value or selling price ang ating transfer price. Negotiated transfer price would uh, somehow be considered na parang best option. Why? Kasi with the negotiated transfer price, Pwede kasi mangyari na si buying division na selling division mag-usap. O baka naman pwede. Di ba 20 pesos and 8 pesos ang usapan. O may idle capacity naman. Di ba sabi natin ang minimum transfer price pag may idle capacity. Ano sagot? 8 di ba? Sabi ni selling division. Pag transfer ko yung sayo yan ng 8 pesos, bawing-bawi lang ako. Si selling division ng performance niya, ang selling price niya which is the transfer price ay 8 pesos. Ang variable cost niya, 8 pesos din. Wala siyang kinitang kahit ano. Pero si buying division, nakukuha niya yan outside, let's say, na 20 pesos din. Makukuha lang niya ng 8 pesos kay selling division. So meron siyang 12 na income. Actually, savings yan. So income in the form of savings. Nakatipid si buying division ng 12. Sabi ng, ng, ng selling division, baka naman pwede na Hati tayo sa kita. Sabi ni selling division, pwede ba na ang transfer price natin ay mga uh, 10 pesos man lang. Kasi ang variable cost ko ay 8. Para kumita naman ako ng 2 pesos per unit. Si buying division, kuha niya sa labas ay 20, matatransfer sa kanya ng 10 pesos. So nakatipid siya ng 10. Overall, kung mapapansin mo, 12 pa rin naman ang pakinabang ng entire company. Pero... Si buy, selling division and buying division somehow na manage nila yung performance nila. Nagkaroon ng kita si uh, selling division, nagkaroon ng savings naman si buying division. At di ba, sabi natin ang objective ng selling division na profit center is to maximize the profit. So nadagdagan siya. Ang objective ng buying division is to minimize the cost. Nakatipid siya ng 10 pesos per unit. Overall, nagkaroon ng income ang organization ng 12 per unit because of the transfer. Okay? Yun ang kagandaan ng negotiated transfer price. Somehow, hindi naman magsasuffer yung isang division because uh, parang in favor of the another division or ang pinaka-iniingatan natin tulad ng sabi natin sa responsibility accounting, dapat iisa lang ang goal ng organization. So, yung decision ng ng bawat divi division dapat aligned with the goal of the entire organization. So dapat mga dalaw nila, mga decision nila, iisa lang ang patutunguhan, yung pangbuong organization. Okay? Ayan.
General rules in choosing a transfer price. Di ba meron tayong na-mention na minimum? This time, let's talk about the maximum transfer price. The maximum should be uh, no greater than the lowest market price at which the buying segment can acquire the goods of services externally. Sometimes ang tanong sa exam, what is the maximum price? Pag maximum price, ang point of view na dapat mo makita ay si buying segment, si buying division. Why? Kasi sabi natin, it should be no greater than the lowest market price. Kung lowest market price ay 18, ang bentahan ng selling division ay 20. Kung bebenta mo yan ng 20, anong gagawin ni, buy ni buying division? Hindi na ako sa'yo kukuha. Bibili na lang ako outside. Kaya naman, general rule sa pagpili ng transfer price, dapat hindi lalampas na 18. So pag tinanong sa exam, hahanapin kung magkano yung price outside. Pag maximum ang tanong. Sabi sa number 2, Minimum naman. Sabi natin dito, no less than the sum of the selling segment's incremental cost. Ito yung outlay cost. Ito yung VC asterisk natin. No? With the goods or services plus the opportunity cost. Okay? Uh, uh, of the facilities used. Bakit? Siyempre, mag incur ng cost sa selling division. Alam ka naman, mas mababa pa sa cost na incur niya yung pag-transfer mo kay buying division. So dapat, <clears throat> ang minimum natin, hindi pwedeng malugi naman si selling division. So pag maximum ang tanong, isipin ang kapakanan ni buying division. Pag minimum ang tanong, isipin ang kapakanan ni selling division. Yung point of view niya, napapayag ako na magkaroon ng transfer. Okay? Now, a good should be transferred internally whenever the minimum transfer price which is set by the selling division, as mentioned earlier, is less than the maximum transfer price set by the buying division. So by using this rule, oh, sorry. By using this rule, total profits of the firm are not decreased by an internal transfer. Kung mapapansin nyo, if I go back to the previous slide, hindi naman nagbago yung income ng buong organization to wealth pa rin naman. Pero na-manage mo, yung dalawang divisions. Nagkaroon lang ng internal transfer ng kita or ng profit. Okay? Pabalik na tayo sa susunod na slides. Ayan. True or false tayo. Nasa inyo yung handout but I need to know your answer for every question. So participate tayo. Ha? Ayan. For this one, the transfer price used for internal transfers between divisions of the same company can increase or decrease each division's reported profits. Lagi sa chat box ang sagot. Transfer price used for internal transfers between divisions of the same company can increase or decrease each division's reported profits. Alright, ayan. So, tingnan ko nga ang answer natin. Sabi ay true. Hindi ko naman nasend yung, ano, yung, yung answer key, no? Para pares tayo eh. And you are correct. That's true. O pag true, papaliwanan pa ba? Wag na. So, dito tayo sa number two. Given an idle capacity, the optimal transfer price would be equal to the sum of outlay cost and opportunity cost. Okay? Given an idle capacity, the optimal transfer price would be equal to the sum of outlay cost and opportunity cost. Patingin nga na answer. Nagyan po lang number 2, tapos uh, T or F na lang. Okay? Uy, tagus sumagot ngayon ha. Alright, 2F, F, F. Ayan. Mukhang nagkaka... Mukhang nag-usap-usap na kayo ha. And your answer is... False. Anong mali dito? Diba? Idle capacity tapos may opportunity cost. Walang opportunity cost kapag may idle capacity. Okay, that's good. Multinational companies cannot use transfer price. Is it true or false? 
Number 3 na po tayo ha. Anong sagot natin? 3 FFF. Ayan. So, let's reveal the answer. It's false. Grabe naman yun, no? Parang sinabi niya na hindi pwede. Di ba may multinational companies? The buying division could be in the Philippines. The selling division could be somewhere in other country. So, yun. Pwede pa rin po ang transfer price. Ayoko mo nang i-discuss further. May mga tanong pa ulit tungkol sa multinational companies. Ayan. Transfer prices equal to market prices are least appropriate when the selling division has excess productive capacity. Number four, space. Again, transfer prices equal to market prices are least appropriate when the selling division has excess productive capacity. Tingnan ko nga kung hindi tayo nalilito sa mga ito. So number four, what could be your answer in number four? Okay. Sige na, i-reveal na natin yung answer. Wala talaga ako nakita. Anyways, that's true. That's the least appropriate. Okay? So let's go to number five. Ayan. Multinational companies must use transfer prices based on actual cost. Is it true or false kapag multinational companies? It's number five. 5F, sabi ni Krisha. 5F, sige nga. Mamaya, be ready with your calculator. Ha? Kasi we, we will be answering the problems later. Okay? So, grabe naman to. Yung mga word na must, yan minsan ang ano eh. Minsan kahit hindi mo naiintindihan yung concept, no, pag must, yan masyadong mabigat. So, kung hindi ka talaga sure sa idea, pag nakita mo yung must, i-false mo na lang. Pero siyempre, Masyado naman talaga mabigat. It's not based on the actual cost. Okay? It's not based on the actual cost kapag nagkakaroon ng uh, decision on transfer prices kapag multinational companies. Ano naman dapat na i-consider kapag multinational companies? A bit complicated compared, me, compared kapag ang companies ay within the same country lang. Kasi one factor that could affect the transfer price ay yung taxes. Yung income tax kasi, for example, dalawang countries, magkaiba ng income tax rate. So, syempre, yung mas malaking profit, ilagay mo na dun sa country na mas mababa yung income tax rate. Di ba kanina, nagbabalance tayo ng profit kay selling division and buying division. Ang bawa, ang buying division, na dun sa country na ang laki-laki ng income tax rate, huwag mo na bigay sa kanya yung malaking profit, dun na lang ka selling division. So, ganun yung pag-decide kapag multinational company siya pinag-uusapan natin. Okay? So, let's go to number six. There are two approaches for determining a transfer price. Cost-based and market-based. Kakasabi ko lang kanina-kanina, no? Huwag nyo na ilagay. Sagutin na natin, it's false because there are three. Ano yung nawawalang isa? The negotiated na uh, approach. Okay? Ayan. Let's go to number 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 to number seven. Okay, number seven. If a cost-based transfer price is used, the transfer price must be based on variable cost. Must be based on variable cost. Tingin niya. Seven false. Sabi ni Krisha, Lori, Emmanuel. Grabe, magkakasundo talaga itong mga to. Sabi ko nga, and you are all correct. Okay, that's too strict. Sabi natin, ang variable cost na ito ay may asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. There are stories na pwedeng mag-add, hindi lang ba sa variable cost. Okay? Number eight. A problem with the cost-based transfer price is that it does not provide adequate incentive for the selling division to control costs. Is it true or false? Is that a problem with the cost-based transfer price uh, that it does not provide adequate incentive for the selling division to control costs? Sabi, so number eight, true, 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 true. Ano ba yan? Tama po tayong lahat. Very good. Okay? Kasi naman, kahit naman anong effort ng selling division, di ba? Kahit anong effort niya, kung naka-cost-based transfer price tayo, sa kung ano yung ma-incur ma niya na actual na cost, doon tayo magbe-base 
'di ba? Whether variable cost asterisk asterisk man 'yan, ay eh, yun yung i-set natin na transfer price. So ibig sabihin, wala naman talaga incentive for them. Okay? So in the formula for a minimum transfer price, the opportunity cost is the contribution margin of cost of uh, again, in the in the formula for a minimum transfer price, opportunity cost is the contribution margin of goods sold to the buying division. All right, this is number nine. Can I see your answer in number nine? Nine F Dow. Nine F. Your answers are correct. Ito o oh, mali. Dapat pala pag F no modified para masabi nyo which part uh, made the statement wrong. Then hindi naman si Kate. Pag na explain na lang natin. Let's go to number ten. A negotiated transfer price should be used when an outside market for the goods does not exist. A negotiated, negotiated transfer price should be used when an outside market for the goods does not exist. Okay. Puro true. Ano, nag-group study ba tayo dito? Pare-parehas tayo ng sagot. Ah. So, but that's good ah, na magkakasundo tayo at nagkakaintindihan because this is really true. Pag walang uh, yung outside market for the goods that does not exist, mag-usap na lang talaga si buying at saka si selling division. The negotiated transfer price would be better or best for them. <clears throat> o, ito pa. Market-based Transfer prices, this is for number 11, are best for the company when the selling division is operating at capacity. Market-based transfer prices are best for the company when the selling division is operating at capacity. Tingin nga na answer natin. 11, true, 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 true. All right, and you are all correct. Okay. Meron kayong titiwalag sa inyo na hindi ka kamukha ng sagot? Mamaya, malaman natin. So number 12, compared to a jewelry store, a supermarket has higher margin and higher turnover. What is this? This is number 12. Yan. Okay. 12, ayun, may mga tumiwalag na, magkaiba ng sagot. 12, true, 12, F, F, uy, it's a tie, dalawang true, dalawang false. What would be the answer? It's false. Why? A jewelry store, higher margin, yes. Di ba? Kumpara mo sa mga binibenta sa supermarket, mas malaki ang uh, margin ng jewelry store. Pero sa turnover, Kung gano'y ang kabilis mabenta at makolekta, dun tayo hindi tama. Kasi mas mababa ang turnover, mas mabagal mabenta ang jewelries kesa sa mga nasa loob ng supermarket. So this is false. Okay? Number 13. Uy, parang nasabi ko to kanina, pero tingnan natin kung nagkaintindihan tayo. Differences in tax rates between countries can complicate the, the determination of the appropriate transfer price. It's number 13. What's your answer in number 13? May see your answer. 13, true, 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 true. And your answers are correct. That's true. Nasabi ko kanina. So, hindi lang basta variable cost, selling price, may plus, plus, plus. We have to consider the tax rates. Paano makonsider? Siyempre, tingnan mo, uh, kumaga, isang example lang yung income tax. Marami pang ibang taxes involved. Kapag multinational companies tapos different countries yung uh, location. Yung, yung, ano, yung selling at saka buying division. Okay? Number 14. Okay, this one. If sales increase while income and investment remain constant, ROI increases. Number 14. Sagot sa number 14. Let's check your answers. True, 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 true. Aba, nagkasundo ulit sila. Number 14 is 
Oops, ayaw mo lumabas. Is false. Ano ba yung formula ng ROI? Return on investment. Pag nag-FS analysis tayo someday, kung magkikita man tayo sa review or sa financial management, return on. Pag return, net income or segment income ang nasa taas. Kasi return new income. On investment. Investment yung ilalim. Kung ano yung on, yung nandito. Di ba pag ROA, asset to. Pag ROA, equity ito. Kung ano yung nandito, yun yung denominator. Kung ano yung nandito, will tell you na net income yung nasa numerator. Over investment. Tingnan po ah, tumasang sales. Pero sabi niya, yung income, o oh, yung numerator. Yung investment, remain constant. Ginulo ka lang. Tumas ang sales. So possible, tumas din ang expenses. Kaya na-retain yung income. So the answer is false. Kasi ROI will remain the same. Okay? So I think this is the last. Number 15, transfer prices for sales between divisions located in different countries are usually set by the governments of the two countries. Can I check your answer? Number 15. Ayan. Usually set by the government of the two countries. The answer is false. Hindi yung government ang nagsiset. But the government can influence yung kanilang transfer pricing decision. Why? Una, dahil sa mga taxes na ini-impose ng government. Yun yung nakaka-influence. But hindi po siya sineset ng government. Dahil ito ay internal na transaction. Itong transfer pricing na to, ang magseset pa rin po niyan ay yung organization or yung management pa rin. Okay? I hope that's clear. Okay, so thank you for participating sa ating true or false questions. Dito tayo mag-participate ulit ngayon. Let's try to apply what we have learned uh, kanina. Problems. Anong tip muna bago tayo magsimula? Ang unang hinahanap natin, alamin muna kung may excess. Dahil pag may excess, ano transfer price niyan? Variable cost. Asterisk, asterisk. Okay? Pag no excess, anong transfer price niyan? Selling price, asterisk. Baka may asterisk. Ano ba yung mga asterisk na yan? Kasi baka may additional cost. Kasi baka may cost na na-save. Pero kapag may excess, pero insufficient, ano mangyayari? Ang transfer price should be pro... Ah, no, no, no. Ang opportunity cost should be Prorated. So magre-recompute po tayo. Pag tinanong ang minimum transfer price, anong point of view ang dapat tingnan? Selling division. Pag tinanong ang maximum transfer price, anong point of view ang titingnan? Buying division. Alright. So let's continue. Ayan. So I'm giving you mga uh, 40 seconds to answer this one. Okay. I think sa sa inyo na pala to, kahit mga 30 seconds na lang. So I'll wait for your answer. Ang basa ang tanong dito, assume that the purchasing division can buy the same from outside market at 18.5. Ang tanong is, what is the minimum transfer price? Sabi na. And put your answers in our chat box. Huwag masyadong mag-isip. We just have to check yung mga conditions. Hmm. Okay. So may, let me check your answer. Yeah, may dalawa na. Ang answer ay, uy, may patanong pa, 20? 20? Okay, so 
Let's answer. Ano ulang hanapin? Kung may excess or no excess. Its capacity is 10,000 units. Current outside sales ay 10,000 units. So ano masasabi natin? No excess. Okay. Ano hanapin natin? Transfer price ay, ang minimum transfer price ay equal sa selling price. Asteris. Nasa yung selling price natin? Oops, 20. Meron, check mo ah, bago mo i-answer ang 20, meron bang plus or minus? Meron bang additional cost or uh, cost saved? Wala. So the answer is correct, 20. Okay? Okay, let's go to number 2. This time, 20 seconds lang ang ibibigay ko for you to answer this one. Okay, go. Okay, so I got two answers here. Twenty seconds na. Sige, extend natin na kung mga ano pa, mga additional twenty seconds. Baka nag-pressure pa. Hintayin ko yung answers na iba. Alright, wala na sumulpot ah, or baka di ko na naman nakikita. So they answered for 8. Sige, tingnan natin. May excess. Ano ba muna tanong? What is the selling division's opportunity cost per unit? Tanong, may excess ba o wala? Check natin. Ang capacity, 10,000. Ang current, 7,000. Ano yung excess natin? 3,000. Ilan ang orders? 3,000 din. Okay, so meron tayong enough na excess. Ano ang opportunity cost natin? The answer is zero. So ang answer sa number two ay zero. Kasi alam ko, ang isipin nyo, the minimum transfer price. Kapag minimum transfer price, dyan pa lang po talaga tayo tatama na ang minimum transfer price natin ay 8 pesos yung variable cost. So be careful with the uh, problem. Alam nyo minsan, madali kasi sa transfer price. So nanlilito na lang sa examiner na opportunity cost na lang itatanong niya or what. Okay? So be careful. Well, let's now go to number 3. But this one, I'm giving you 30 seconds And then, mga 40 seconds to answer, mga ganyan. Okay, let's try number three. Go. Hello? Sir, wait lang po. Okay. Nag-hello lang, hello lang.
All right, so I can see answers now. Sabi nila 12.45. Oh, yung nagkasundo-sundo naman. All right, so ano unang i-check? May excess ba? Capacity is 10. Outside sales, 7.5. So ang excess ay 2,500. What is the minimum transfer price? That the selling division would be willing to accept if 4,000 units will be sold. So 4,000. So may excess lang po tayo na 2,5. May kulang po na 1,5. So therefore, the transfer price will be variable cost na 8 pesos plus 20 minus 8. Tanong, meron bang mga na save additional cost? Parang wala naman no? pag do-renounce mo yung problem. Multiply natin ang ilan yung may uh, opportunity cost? 1,500 over 4,000. If you compute, so 12 times 1,5 over 4,000 plus 8. So the answer is correct, 1,250. That's the minimum transfer price. All right. So tama na tayo lahat. Let's go to number 4. I'm giving you 30 seconds for this. Go. Okay, so ang tinatanong na sa atin dito ay what is the maximum, ako baka nakakalimutan na, maximum transfer price that the purchasing division would be willing to accept. So the answer is 18.50. Pag point of unit purchasing, tinatanong yung pinakamalaking or maximum transfer price na papayag siya hanggang doon sa kung magkano niya na bibili outside. Pag tinanong ang minimum transfer price, you might be correct. Kasi oh, dito, oh, meron siyang excess, pero insufficient. But then again, ang tanong ay hindi minimum, kundi maximum transfer price. So the answer is 18.15. Okay? So let's now move to number 5. Okay. So I'll wait for your answer in number 5. Okay, so in number five, the question again is maximum transfer price. Plus, sabi natin kanina, kahit anong pagsasabihin yan, pag maximum transfer price, sinong point of view? Purchasing division talaga. Ano yung papayag siya? 18.50 ulit. Ang number five natin. Okay? Yeah. Punta tayo sa number six. Ang dami na nangong kwento, di ba? Meron pa siya sinabi na kapag may, may masas, meron daw masasave, etc. Pero ano tanong? What is the maximum transfer price? Sa katitingin, magkano venta outside market? Again, kahit hindi masyado mag-analyze, 18.50. Yan ang answer sa number 6. So sometimes nandilito lang sa examiner. Pero gawin natin, what if ang tanong ay minimum transfer price? I-check na rin natin. Operating at capacity, yes. 10,000, 10,000. Ilan ang binibili? 4,000. So, ibig sabihin, may opportunity kasi talaga tayo sa lahat ng items. So, anong transfer price natin? Transfer price would be equal to the selling price, asteris, asteris. So, that would be 19. Meron ba tayong cost na masasave or madadagdag? Meron piso, minus 1. So, the minimum transfer price is 18. As far as selling division is concerned, the minimum transfer price should be 18 pesos. Pero sa point of view ng purchasing division, it can accept up to 18.5 because that is the maximum transfer price na papayag siya. Okay, so that will be for number 6. Let's now go to number 7. So I'll just continue answering number 7. But uh, habang sinasolve ko, pero pag nakapag-solve na kayo, you can always put that in our chat box and let's compare our answers. Okay? So let's go to number seven. Sabi rito, if current outside sales, question po muna kasi mahaba yung problem. If current outside sales are 50,000 board feet, what is the minimum transfer price? So we are on the point of view of the selling division. That the lean division or selling division could accept. What's the story? So the lean division of Rosal Homes Incorporated produces and sells lumber that can be sold to outside customers or within the company to the mail division. So ito yung ating buying division. So the lean division yung ating selling division. 
The following data have been gathered for the coming period. Ang capacity ay 100,000 board feet. So makukumpare na natin immediately with the 50,000 board feet. So makikita natin na meron tayong excess na ilan. 50,000 na board feet din. Okay? Na board feet. BF na lang. Okay? Price ng board, uh, price per board foot, that would be 4 pesos. Ang variable na production cost at ang variable na selling cost ay 2 and 0.7 respectively. So total na variable cost natin ay 2.7 for ang ating SPU. Ang VCU natin ay 2.7. Okay? From here, ang CMU natin ay 1.3. Okay. Kinupit lang natin sa CMU. So going back here, board fit needed... 40,000. So, makikita natin na meron tayong enough excess capacity. So, outside price paid per board foot would be 3 pesos and 50 centavos. May kinuwento pa sa ilalim. If the lean division sells to the mel division, 0.4 per, per board foot can be saved in shipping costs. So, what would be your answer? What would be your minimum Transfer price. So yung transfer price natin would be ano yun? Variable cost as risk plus selling price minus the variable cost. May excess tayo. Pero ito po ay zero. Kaya may excess. So VC is 2.7. Meron po tayo masasave na 0.4. So minus 0.4. Kasi nga as the risk. So the answer is 2.30 in number 7. Okay? Let's now go to number 8. This time, same story, pero ang kaiban lang, 70,000 board feet naman yung kailangan ng uh, buying division. So, meron tayong 30,000 na excess. Pero ang kailangan ay 40,000. So, ano mangyayari dito? Yung 10,000 ay kukunin sa 70,000 na board feet para lang ma-fulfill yung order ni buying Division. So, ang transfer price sa would be VC asterisk plus SP minus VC. Ayan. So, ang VC asterisk natin ay, di ba ito ay 2.7? May masasave na 0.4. So, minus 0.4. So, that would be 2.3. Plus SP minus VC. Ang SP ay 4. Minus ang VC na original ay 2.7. Okay? Pero, mumultiply natin to ng... Dahil may opportunity cost yung 10,000. So times 10,000 over 40,000. Ayan. So ang magiging sagot natin ay 2.625 or 2.63. That would be your minimum transfer price for number 8. Okay? So this time, let's proceed to number 9. Same uh, story. Pero anong tanong dito? If lean division has sufficient excess capacity, kung may excess na sufficient, VC, asterisk yan. So, 2.3. Yun, yung ating minimum transfer price. Price. Okay? To fulfill the male division's needs, what will be the effect? Yan ang minsan medyo challenging sa transfer prices. Transfer pricing decision. Kapag ang tinatanong na ay yung effect on the overall contribution margin. Ano mangyayari? Eh, idle capacity naman yung pinag-uusapan natin. Ibig sabihin, wala, walang uh, kita out of the idle na capacity. Ngayon, si selling division, ano mangyayari? Kapag nagkaroon ng transfer, what will happen? Yung selling price niya or yung transfer price niya would be 2.30. Magkano yung variable cost niya? 2.30 din, di ba? If the transfer takes place, 2.30 yung variable cost. If the transfer mo at variable cost, kaya si selling division, wala naman na pala kapag sinet mo at the minimum. Si buying division, magkano niya nabibili outside? So outside price ay 3.50. Pero ang transfer price na nanggaling kay selling division ay 2.30. So with that, meron tayo 1.20 na pakinabang si buying division. Overall, kaya overall po ito, meron 1.2 per unit. 
Kaya ang tanong, what is the effect on the overall contribution margin? Mumultiply lang po natin ito ng ilan. Ang pinag-uusapan natin ay 40,000 board feet. Times 40,000. So ang answer natin ay 48,000 na increase in our contribution margin. That would be for number 9. Okay? Kinumpere natin from wala, from idle. Yan po ang uh, naging uh, effect kapag transfer ay nangyari. Let's go to number 10. Sabi rito, sufficient excess capacity. But what will be the effect on the company's overall contribution margin if the transfer price negotiated is 2.4? So hindi minimum. Negotiated transfer price po tayo. So from IDEL, no, wala namang nangyayari kasi may sufficient excess capacity. I mean, walang galaw para dun sa IDEL capacity. Wala tayo zero yung profit ni selling division, wala rin namang savings sa buying division kung hindi ga, magagalaw yung idle capacity. So selling division, buying, and overall, what, would have, what will happen? Ang selling price sa selling division or transfer price would be 2.40, di ba? Yun daw. Pero magkano variable cost niya? 2.30, di ba? Itong 2.7 minus 0.4, ito. So meron mapapala na 0.10 si selling division. Okay, per unit. Si buying division from 3.50, ang transfer price niya ay 2.40. Outside price, transfer price. Ito po yun. So 1.1. Ayan. So overall, magkakaroon na 1.2 na increase pa rin. Multiply natin ang 40,000 units. Ang answer natin ay 48,000 increase. Parehas pa rin. Why? Di ba sabi natin, nagkaroon lang ang lipatan ng income. Dati, ang selling division ay walang kinita from the transfer. Lahat ng 1.2 na kay buying division. Ngayon, nilipat na yung point sa S, sa selling division, galing po yan kay buying division. So overall, parehas pa rin naman po yung impact. 48,000 increase in the contribution margin. Okay? Let's go, go to number 11. Actually, parehas yung number 11 at number 10. Ang tinatanong lang ay male division. Sino ba si male division? Sa po yung buying division. So if we go back to number 10, ang buying division ay ito. Kaya pag sinagot natin ito, i-multiply lang din natin siya ng 40,000. Kaya ang answer po natin, 40,000 times 1.1, ang answer po natin, ang effect kay male division ay 44,000 na increase in our in the, in the profit of male division. Okay? Ayan. So let's now go to number 12. This time, same problem, pero sabi rito, may sufficient excess capacity to fulfill the male division's needs. What will be the effect on the profit of the company as a whole if the transfer price of 2.4 is changed to 2.7. So, nakita naman natin kanina, binago natin transfer price. Ano mangyayari sa profit ng company as a whole? Pakita po natin. Yung 2.4 muna, pakita natin. 2.4, uh, selling division, buying division, and overall. So, 2.4 minus 2.3, di ba? Transfer price minus the variable cost. That is 0.10. Yan ang kinikita niya if set at 2.4 yung transfer price. Okay. So, a buying division is 3.50 minus 2.40, 1.10. Overall, 1.20 pa rin yung kita natin. Kapag ginawa 2.7, instead of 2.4 and transfer price, how will it look like? S, B, O. Transfer price is 2.7. Ang variable cost ay 2.3. So, ang kita ni selling division ay 0.40. Tumaas. So what do we expect with the buying? Dapat bumaba siya kasi 3.50 minus 2.7 na transfer price. So nakasave ng 0.80 si buying division. Overall, 1.20 pa rin pag pinagsama. Kaya sabi rito, what will be the effect on the profit of the company as a whole if the transfer price of 2.4 is changed? May be change to 2.7. So, point of comparison is from 1.2, naging 1.2 pa rin, so therefore, the answer is no effect. 
Okay? Pag minultiply mo yan ng 40,000, nag-increase ng 48,000 yan. Pero kahit baguhin mo, multiply mo pa rin ng 40,000, increase pa rin po siya ng uh, 48,000. Ibig sabihin, walang magbabago sa increase ng 48,000. So, ang clue natin dito, pag binago lang ang transfer price, na overall, walang magiging uh, effect sa profit natin. Pero, yung performance ni S, from 0.1 naging 0.4, nag-improve ng 0.3. Multiply mo na 40,000. Ano nangyari? Pag si uh, selling division, 0.3 times 40,000, 12,000 po ang increase ni selling division. Pansinin, si, si buying division from 1.1 naging 0.8. Bumaba ng 0.3. Diba? Bumaba ng 0.30. Pag minultiply na 40,000, 12,000. Bumaba ng 12,000. Kung ano yung tinaas ni selling division, siyang ibinaba ni buying division. Kaya ang overall, parehas pa rin na 1.2. Sabi natin kanina, nagkakaroon lang ng internal transfer between the divisions. Pero ang overall, parehas lang din ang effect. Kaya pag binagal transfer price, no effect or no changes in the profit of the company as a whole. But with the divisions, meron po yan. Okay. Number 13. If lean division is operating at capacity, oops, ibang usapan na to. Operating at capacity. Ibig sabihin, bago magkaroon ng transfer sa si selling division, uh, nabibenta na niya outside ng magkano? 4 pesos. Ang variable cost niya ay 2.7. Kumikita na si selling division ng magkano? 1.30. Si buying division, outside price ay 3.5. Pero ang actual na puha niya is 3.5 kasi yun yung senaryo kapag no transfer. Yun yung senaryo dun sa idle capacity or sa 40,000 na kailangan natin. Wala. Kaya overall, kumikita naman talaga kahit hindi magkaroon ng transfer ng Uh, from selling to buying division, kumikita naman ang 1.3. If the transfer will take place, following the operating of, following the transfer price or minimum transfer price when operating at capacity and the effects overall contribution. Selling division, buying division, and overall. Overall ang tanong natin. So, ang selling price natin kapag nagkaroon ng transfer, hindi na po for, ha? magkano selling price po natin? Siyempre, pag, uh, at capacity, di ba, selling price, asteris, asteris, mayroong 0.4 na na-sale, 3.60. Magkano variable cost natin? Hindi 2.7, kundi 2.30, na minus po yung uh, 0.4 pa rin. Okay? Kaya naman, ang contribution margin natin is 1.30. Oops, kaparehas lang ni selling division. Eh si buying, ano nangyari? Outside price niya ay 3.50. Eh pinilit na magkaroon ng transfer. Ang transfer price ay 3.60. Malik, malaki pa sa uh, selling price outside. Meron point 10 na loss. Si buying division, napamahal siya. So therefore, 1.20 ang overall natin. Ano nangyari? What is the effect on the company's overall contribution margin? Galing 1.3, naging 1.2. Bumaba ng 0.10. Multiply ng 40,000 na uh, board feet. Kung okay, kino-consider, 4,000 decrease. Yan po ang answer natin sa number 13. Let's now go to number 14. So the question is, what is the minimum transfer price that the engine division should accept? So malamang, selling division na naman ang pinag-uusapan natin dito. So minimum transfer price. Ano unang uh, alamin? May excess capacity ba? Scan. Okay. So uh, total motorcycles incorporated manufactures and sells high price motorcycles. The engine division produces and sells engines to other motorcycle companies and internally to production division. It has been decided that the engine division will sell 30,000 units to the production division. So 30,000 ang kinoconsider na units to transfer to buying division. The engine division currently operating at capacity. Alam na agad. So dapat hanapin natin yung selling price. Asterisk. 
Kasi baka merong additional cost. Has a unit sales price of 1.8. So 1.8 agad tayo rito. Check natin kung may plus or minus. Unit variable cost and fixed cost of 700 and 500. So wala na kinalaman yan because selling price na ang point of view natin. The production division is currently paying 1.6 per unit to an outside supplier. 180 pesos per unit can be saved on internal sales. Therefore, ima-minus mo yung 180 pesos. Kaya naman, ang answer natin in number 14, to get a minimum transfer price that is 1.8 minus 180, the answer is 1,620. Okay? That's number 14. This time, what is the increase or decrease in overall company profits if this transfer takes place? Ano nangyayari? Operating at capacity. Currently, selling division. And then we have here the buying division. And then the overall. Since operating at capacity, nagbebenta na pala talaga outside si engine division or si selling division ng 1,800. That's the selling price. Mukhang variable cost niya. Unit variable cost niya ay 500 pesos. Ayan. Okay? So that's uh, 1,300 pesos na kinikita ni na contribution margin rather ni uh, selling division. Pero si uh, buying division, outside price ay 1,600. Since no transfer is uh, happening, ang actual price niya ay 1,600. Okay, wala namang na tipid or what kasi wala namang transfer na naganap. Kaya overall, bago magkaroon ng transfer, may 1-3 na talaga ang overall company. Now, if the transfer will take place, SBO, e operating at capacity. Anong sabi natin? Ang selling price natin or transfer price na nakompute natin sa number 14 ay 1,620. Ngayon, ang variable cost natin, is how much? Magkano ang variable cost natin? Ay, baligtad po, hindi po ito 500. Fixed cost po pala yung 500. Sorry naman. So, ang fixed cost, ang variable cost po natin ay 700 po. Hindi po agad na pansin, my bad. 700. So, ang, ang kita po natin ay it's 1-1. One, one. Ayan. Tapos ito po ay 1-1 one, one din. Ayan. Kaya naman, ang variable cost mo, pag nagkaroon ng transfer, hindi 700 yung variable cost kasi magkakaroon ng reduction sa variable cost ng 180. So, 700 minus 180 is 520. Kaya, ang contribution margin niya is still 1-1. Mapapansin mo, wala naman changes masyado kay selling division talaga unless magbago ng transfer price. Ang buying division, outside price is 1-6. Ang transfer price ay 1620, di ba? Ito po 'yon. So, lugi siya ng 20. Overall, 1 million 1080 per unit. So, dito pa lang, ano nangyari sa overall profit ng company? From 11 naging 1080, bumaba ng 20 actually dahil kay buying division 'yon. Multiply po natin ang ilang units, 30,000. So, therefore, ang answer natin ay 600,000 pesos. Decrease. Yan po ang answer natin in number 15. Alright. Number 16. If engine division has enough excess capacity, enough excess to provide the requirement of production division, what is the minimum transfer price? So, hindi na at capacity, may enough excess na. So, ang transfer price natin ay equal sa variable cost asterisk. No variable cost asterisk ay 700 minus your 180, di ba? So variable cost minus the cost saved, so that would be 520 pesos. That's for number 16. I think this one is the last problem for transfer pricing. Kung meron po po tayo mga problems, hand out natin, that's for you to answer uh, separately. Okay, so this is the last item for transfer pricing. What is the maximum transfer price? So with that, pwede ko ba ma-request kung anong sagot natin sa number 17. Can you give me the maximum transfer price that the production division would be willing to accept? 
Can I see your answers? Ayan, 1,600 correct. So natuto na tayo ha. Sa maximum transfer price, hahanapin lang magkano binibenta sa outside supplier. Very good. Okay, so uh, we're done with transfer pricing. So with that, rest lang muna tayo ng mga 10 minutes. Bio break, CR break, kung gusto mag-water. 10 minutes, sir. Mga 10 minutes lang. And then we will resume. Ako naman magsasalita after 10 minutes, alright? So pause muna tayo for 10 minutes. I'll see you after 10 minutes. Okay, this time, ang pag-uusapan naman natin, yung transaction na ang sales ay papunta outside the, the organization or the company. So, focus tayo sa pricing decision na pupunta sa ating mga customers. Okay? So, there are factors that affect the pricing decision ng mga ng management or ng organization. Ito pong uh, lima na to, yung pinaka-summary niya. Pero, maraming uh, iba pang uh, possible factors. Depende. Iba-iba kasi sinasabi ng mga authors. But generally, itong tatlong C's, isang M and G, ito po yung factors that affect the pricing decision. Number one is customer demand. Siyempre, kapag ang mga suppliers natin, alam nila na talagang mataas ang demand ng customers natin, ang tendency, uh, nagsiset sila ng sobrang taas na price. Kita mo yung demand sa face mask. Demand sa face shield, grabe yung nangyari. So, noong sobra-sobra ang demand sa face shield, halos napakamahal ng face shield noon. Pero ngayon, na sobrang uh, dami na rin ang supplies ngayon ng face shield. Kita mo magkano na lang ang mga face shield ngayon. Dati mga 50 pesos, 75 pesos. Ngayon, 6 pesos na lang yung mga face shield na yan. So, yung customer demand, malaki talaga ang impact niya sa pricing decision ng organization. Okay? Number two is competitors' actions. Kapag nagtaas ng presyo ang competitors mo, most likely baka sumabay ka rin. Pag nagbaba siya, talaga mukhang kailangan mo medyo sumabay kasi baka magsilipat sa kanila yung mga customers mo. So malaking factor talaga ang action ng mga competitors mo. You just have, uh, siyempre, yung action nila ay beyond your control. You just have to watch out for their actions. Or pwede mo i-anticipate or maging proactive ka. Pwede mo i-anticipate yung mga possible actions nila. So, uunahan mo na sila. Yung mga ganun. So, malaki yung impact talaga nitong number two. And number three, of course, napakalaking factor din ng cost sa pricing decision. Dapat pag nagsaset ka ng selling price, it should be enough uh, or it should be set with reasonable allowance for profit. Dapat ma-cover niya talaga yung cost natin. Market forces, ito yung nasabi natin na uh, yung galaw ng supply and demand. Pag sobrang dami ng supply, ang pricing decision natin medyo affected din dahil you have to uh, lower your price para pumunta sa yung mga customer. Pero pag konti yung supply, ang tendency, iba naman umaabuso. Just like what happened with the face mask naman na uh, Yung N95 dati, ang OAOA ng presyo, umaabot ng 200-300 Pero normally, nabibenta lang yan ng sobrang mura lang. So, the market forces really uh, have a great impact also in the pricing decision. At syempre, ang government relations. Kapag nag-set na ng price ceiling or price floor ang government, kailangan na, na sumunod ng mga organizations. Otherwise, they will be uh, penalized pag hindi sila sumunod sa mga uh, sineset ng government. Nangyari yan sa mga face mask and face shield, di ba? Nung talagang sobrang nagkakaubusan, maraming umaabuso ng mga suppliers na mga nagbebenta, mga nag-hoard ng mga face mask and face shield, tapos binibenta ng sobrang mahal kasi alam naman na kailangan na kailangan talaga ng mga customers. Sabi ng government, dapat ganito mo lang sa ibenta. There was a time also na sa rice, nagkaroon ng shortage so, yung mga nakapag-hoard ng rice, nagbebenta ng rice ng sobrang mahal. So, ginawa ng aksyon ng government, uh, nag, ano sila, nag, nag-set siya na ito lang ang uh, ceiling ng ating uh, price pagdating sa rice. Lahat ng magbebenta, more than that, ganun din sa mga face mask and face shield, pag nagbenta more than the, the price set by the government, 
eh, mapapenalize talaga. I-re-report natin sa kinaukulan so that they will be uh, uh, subject to kung ano man yung penalty na sinet din ng government. Ayan. So generally, ito yung mga factors that, that affect the pricing decision. At ang pricing de decision, uh, ang computation ng price, selling price na papunta sa outside uh, customers natin, uh, sa classroom, sa exams, ang dali lang yung computin. But in reality, ito ay sobrang critical. Sobrang importante nito na kapag nagkamali ka ng pricing decision, possible na ma bumagsak yung company mo or malugi. Kapag nag-overprice ka, ano mangyayari? Lipat sa iba yung mga customers mo. Pero kapag underprice ka naman, dudumugin ka ng mga customers mo. But the problem is, yung bagkikitain mo would be enough to cover all the expenses para hindi ka rin magkaroon ng loss. So, talagang uh, sa tunay na buhay, sa income statement, sales. Tapos all the rest expenses, sobrang haba na listahan. Pero sa tunay na buhay, isang line man yan. Pero napaka-importante at talagang pinaka-importante yan dahil kung hindi niya makukover lahat ng nasa ilalim, sira or uh, hindi maging maganda yung result ng pricing decision natin. That, I mean, that is because of our uh, not so uh, effective na pricing decision. Ayan. May konting tanong lang tayo. What do you call this pricing strategy in which a firm charges a high initial price and then gradually lowers the price to attract more price sensitive na mga customers? Ano ang tawag natin dito? Is it what we call the competitive pricing? Is it the value-based pricing? Ito ba yung price scheming na tinatawag or penetration pricing or wala sa nabanggit? What is this pricing strategy in which a firm charges a high initial price and then gradually lowers the price to attract more price-sensitive customers? Ano kaya ito? Tingnan natin ang answer, penetration pricing. C, price scheming. Aba, magkakaiba na sagot. The answer is, uy, ayaw lumabas. The answer is price scheming. Charge mo na ng sobrang taas and then later on, bababaan to, to attract more price sensitive customers. Alam mo, napakagandang example nito. Yung mga naglalabas ng mga bagong gadgets, ang Apple, ang Samsung. Kapag naglabas yun ng, ng Note 20 Plus or si iPhone, ano ba ngayon? 12. So pag naglabas yan, sobrang taas ng initial price, di ba? And then gradually, they will lower it. Kasi tayo mga, hindi pala tayo, hindi wala ako kasama doon. Yung mga talaga nakaabang sa mga bago talaga na gadgets na mga ilalabas ni Apple or ni Samsung, talagang they don't care with the high initial price. They will buy that. And then gradually, lowers the price. When I bought my phone before, sobrang mahal niya nung una. Tapos after mga ilang months lang, Sobrang nakakapikon minsan na they will really lower the price. Half the price actually yung ginawa nila dun sa phone na pinili ko. And that would attract yung mga uh, more price sensitive yung mga customers. So medyo nakaka-ano lang na konti. Pero ganun talaga. Kung mula yung ka nakaabang sa mga bagong lalabas na gadget, be prepared to pay for high initial price. And be prepared as well na, na after a few months lang, bababa agad yung price niyan. So that is what we, what they call price scheming. Usually practiced by those na mga kilala talaga in the industry and they are really offering something na new in the market. Okay? So pag-usapan natin yung ibang uh, pricing strategies. Okay? Yung cost plus pricing, ito yung usual na ginagawa natin sa accounting. Meron tayong cost plus your markup and then you are going to set the selling price. Kapag competitive, uh, hindi na natin explain yung number one, ha? that is what, we, what we've been doing for so long. Competitive pricing, baliktad naman. Mula sa selling price, pabalik tayo sa cost. Di ba sa number one, target natin yung selling price. Number two, target natin yung cost. Paano ba yung competitive pricing? Ang selling price, you look at the market. 
magkano ba binebenta outside yung mga products na to. Ngayon, uh, most likely, lalo na kung bago ka pa lang na company, titinan mo yung presyo nila at hindi ka lalagpas sa sineset nila. Why? Kahit na sobrang confident ka with the quality of your uh, product, kung meron na silang mga, ang mga customers, may kilala na silang product na subok na, dun pa rin sila. Kasi kung mahal yung sa'yo, dun sila sa kanila. Kaya ang ginagawa ng iba, uh, competitive pricing is either equal sila dun sa mga existing na selling price in the market or they will charge a bit lower than the selling price as an introductory, introductory na price. So anong ginagawa? From the selling price, mag-work back, ima-minus yung desired markup, and then they will, they will get the target cost. So number one, target selling price. So number two, target cost. So dito sa number two, lumalabas minsan sa exam, minsan yung target cost natin is of course lower than the cost na initial na plano natin. So what do we do? We will exert effort para mag-cost cut tayo para ma-meet natin yung target cost na yan. Pero make sure without sacrificing the quality of the uh, products of your service, kung service man yung sa inyo. Yung pangatlo naman is value-based pricing. Parang ito ay based on the perception, based on the assessment of the customers on how they value the product. Okay? So what does it mean? Di ba, yung mga most common pricing strategies and methodologies, sometimes they forget about the customer. So instead, yung mga uh, management, they justify, justify the price points based on internal reasons or simply adapting kung ano yung mga existing in the markets. Okay? Now, yung customers, actually, they don't care how much something costs you to make Uh, uh, I mean, sa, uh, they don't care kung magkano yung cost ng paggawa mo ng product na yun or kung magkano yung kay competitors. They actually care how much value they are receiving in what they are paying for your product in exchange. Okay? Pero, ang problema kasi sa number three, that involves a lot of research. That requires a lot of research para ma malaman mo yung behavior ng customer mo, yung kanilang assessment, Okay? So, ang hirap malaman, ang hirap i-quantify nung value na napaperceive ng bawat customer kasi very subjective to. The fourth and the fifth one, medyo magkakontra na konti. Yung number four, pinakalala natin, start at high price and then eventually, bababa yung price. Okay? So, penetration pricing naman. Just to penetrate in the market. Ang gagawin niya, i-offer naman niya ng sobrang baba initially. Or halos ilibre niya initially. Sige, try niyo muna yung product namin. After a month, if you uh, enjoyed our products or if you enjoyed our services, you can subscribe or you can uh, uh, maga, you can now uh, apply for yung mga, di ba, sa Netflix, yung iba dati. Get try ka muna na 14 days na free. Tapos after 14 days, if you enjoy Netflix, you can now subscribe. Ganun din naman sa mga iba pa, sa Crunchyroll at kung ano-ano pang mga ano. Usually, yan yung style ng mga, ng mga ganitong klaseng business, mga Netflix at mga kalaban niya. So start with the low price so that eventually they enjoyed Kumbaga, na-hook na sila sa Netflix. They will not let go of Netflix. So, they will subscribe and pay for the uh, higher price na. But definitely, may mga iba na talagang sinasamanta lang lang nila yung mga period na talagang free. Pero, di ba, meron tayong sasabihin after 14 days, you can cancel for free. So, yung iba talaga, kinakancel na nila for free. Pero iba na naging dependent na doon, talagang itinutuloy nila yung subscription. And that is how those companies earn from introducing the price at lower uh, introducing the product at lower price initially then eventually ayan na yung totoong price ayan iba naman sobrang promo uh, na initially napakalaking discount pero eventually ganito sasabihin niya only for one month ganito ang discount etc pero after one month ganito na siya ayan So, ito yung lima sa mga most common na pricing strategies. Compare lang natin yung cost plus and competitive pricing strategy. Itong cost plus, sabi natin, 
we have the cost plus markup equals the target selling price. If your cost is 100 pesos, ang desired markup mo is 40% on cost, so plus 40, ang selling price mo ay 140. However, kapag competitive pricing model or competitive pricing strategy ang i-adapt mo, nakita mo sa market, ang mga pricing niyan ay mga 125, 130, so gumaya ka na lang sa 125. Ang ginawa mo, with that target markup, ano ba yung desired markup mo? 40% on cost. So, 125 pesos divided by 1.4, the answer is 89.29. Ibig sabi, ano, no, no, ito yung cost natin. Tinawin po natin, mali ng posisyon. So, cost, markup, tas selling price. Ito yung target selling price. Ito naman cost yung pinatarget natin. How? Desired markup ay 40% on cost. So 125 divided by 1.4, makukuha mo na yung cost mo which is 89.29. Magkano yung desired markup mo times 0.4 ng 89.29? That's 35.71. Okay. If you would like to meet that desired markup na 40% on cost, ito po yung uh, itsura ng ating uh, costing. But... If you will notice, ang usual question lang naman sa exam, by how much are you going to reduce the cost para ma-reach mo yung target na cost natin? So the answer is uh, 10.71. Ganun lang minsan tinatanong sa exam. So, uh, pero ang application niya sa tunay na buhay, yung 100 na cost na estimate mo, dapat mag-cost cutting ka ng konti para ma-achieve mo yung 89.29. Magkano yung ikakat mo? 10.71. And then what you're going to do is look at the materials, look at the labor, look at the any other items na pwede mong uh, makat. Baka naman makapagbawas ka ng materials, liitan mo ng konti so that you can meet the requirements in the market and you can uh, achieve yung target cost. O kaya baka you can get cheaper materials, etc. Okay? So that's how we compare the cost plus pricing with the competitive pricing. Yeah. Let's introduce the term markup percentage. Pag sinabi mong markup percentage, ang mga companies kasi minsan, uh, they are using the markup percentage iba-iba ng basis. Depende kung ano sa tingin nila, yung pinaka maganda or, or reasonable na basis in uh, kumaga, computing the selling price. Okay. So ang markup percentage po natin, Markup percentage ay equal sa desired income Ayan. plus, mas madaling matandaan pag inuna natin ilalim, cost base. Ito yung mga included na cost. Okay? Ano yung nandito? Yung mga excluded from cost base. What does it mean? Okay? Kung ang markup percentage ay tinatanong, you have you already have the desired income DI na lang, okay? Kung ang cost base ay variable cost, ang excluded natin ay fixed cost. Ganun lang siya. Kung balikan na natin desired income plus, kung ang cost base natin ay OPEX, ano naman ang excluded? Yung mga cost of goods sold natin. In other words, from the total cost, ano yung cost base, yung included, yung matitira, yun yung mga excluded na cost. That is how we compute for the market percentage. In that way, we can arrive at the same uh, objective, makukuha natin desired income, na cover natin not only the cost base, but also those costs that are not included or uh, excluded nga from the cost base. Okay, to understand better, we will have these illustrations. Okay, for number one, ang tanong dito, what unit price must Barkilia charge if the company uses cost plus pricing based on total cost? Okay, I'll just go back na sa nauna. Pag tinanong na po yung selling price dito, that would be one plus markup percentage. Ayan. Multiply natin ang cost base para makuha natin yung selling price natin. Di ba ganun naman talaga ginagawa natin? Kung magkani markup percentage plus 1, multiply natin ang cost base, we will get the selling price. Okay? Pero be careful. Pag desired income na yung binigay sa atin, dapat 
Kung desired income po yan, i-add mo na yung total cost to get your selling price or sales. Okay? So mamaya makikita natin mabuti ano yung difference ng dalawang pinag-usapan natin na pag-compute ng selling price. So going back with number one, what unit price must Berkeley charge if the company uses cost plus pricing based on total cost? So lahat naman na pala ng cost. Okay, so let's read the problem. So Berkelia Incorporated, which manufactures various lines of computer equipment, is planning to introduce a new line of laptops. Current plans call for the production and sale of 1,000 units with estimated uh, production cost as follows. Ayan. So total cost ay 900,000. Pwede naman po na i-convert natin into per unit yung mga cost natin. Pwede rin naman po na in total. Okay. Sabi dito sa ilalim, the average amount of capital invested in the laptop product line is 500,000. Barkilia's target return on investment or desired income is 20%. So ibig sabihin, 500,000 times 20%, ito po yung desired income natin na, which is 100,000. Kung ang total cost mo po ay 900,000, so, ibig sabihin, magkano daw po ang sale, uh, selling price natin or sales natin? Just have to add the desired income. So, ibig sabihin, 1 million will be your sales or 1,000 pesos per unit yung ating uh, selling price. Nakuha po, total cost po yan, desired income, 100,000. Total cost, 900,000. So, ibig sabihin, if you work back, ang sales mo ay 1 million. E, 1,000 units, unit price ang tinatanong, you divide it by 1,000, so you will get 1,000 pesos per unit. So, that's the answer in number one. Let's go to number two. Same problem, except that this time, may apply na natin yung natutunan natin sa markup percentage. We will be using different markup percentages. Iba kasi iba iba kasi ng basis. Pero later on, we are going to show na pare parehas ng palay selling price sa mga compute natin. Okay. So markup percentage ang tinatanong. Ano sabi natin? Desired income plus yung excluded ilalim yung cost base. Okay. Equals. Ang desired income natin, gawin na natin per unit, 100, di ba? Kasi 100,000 yung desired income natin, which is 500,000 times or 20%. So 100, okay? Ano yung cost base natin? Ang basis po natin, sabi, if Berkelia uses cost plus pricing based on absorption cost. Ano ba absorption cost? So that would be your DM, your DL, your variable overhead, and your fixed overhead, di ba? Uh, sa product costing natin. So, yan po kapag absorption. Yan yung laman ng cost of goods sold din natin. Di ba yan din yung laman ng product cost natin during our cost accounting base. So, DM, DL, manufacturing overhead, a variable lahat to. Meron po, po manufacturing overhead sa baba. Magkano yung total manufacturing na overhead po natin? So, 200, 120, 80, 400 na to, 700 po ang nasa ilalim. Ano yung nasa ibabaw? Hindi ba 900 lahat to? So, 200 na lang po yung excluded. Ibig sabihin, ito rin po yun, yung 100 dito at saka yung 100 dito, yung excluded. So, with that, ang lalabas po ng markup percentage natin ay 42.86%. Ayan. Yun po yung answer natin sa number 2. But if we compute kung magkain selling price, di ba plus 1, so 142.86% mo multiply po natin. Anong cost base? 700. Times 700. Ang lalabas po ay approximately 1,000 pesos. It's just the same with number 1. Iba lang yung market percentage kasi iba lang yung basis. Okay? Let's go to number 3. Mas maintindihan pa natin lalo. If Barkilia uses cost plus pricing based on a variable cost, the markup percentage the company must use would be, so markup percentage natin would be desired income of 100 plus. Ilalim muna ang yung basis variable cost. Magkano yun? Ito po, ito po, di ba? Total variable cost, 500. 
So, over 500. Magkano hindi kasama? E di itong 400. Nasa numerator. Ayan. So, the markup percentage is 100%. 500 over 500. Right? If we get the selling price, that would be a plus 1 to. So, 200% multiply natin ang basis, which is 500. Ayan. So, what's the answer? 1,000 pesos. It's just the same with number 1. Pero, iba-iba lang ng markup percentage. Uh -huh. Let's go to number 4. Baka mas makita natin to. What is the markup percentage if the basis is variable production cost? Ano ba variable production cost? Edi itong tatlo na yan. So the answer would be markup percentage is equal to desired income 100 plus ilalim mo na yung kasama 200, 120, and 80 so that would be 400. Ano hindi kasama? Itong 100 na to at saka itong 400 na to. So yun yung i-add natin sa taas na 500. Right? So ano yung markup percentage natin? That would be 100 plus 500, that's 600. Over 400, that's 150%. Ayan. That's a markup percentage. But just to check, selling price is plus 1. So that would be 250%. Multiply na itong 400 na basis natin, yung denominator. So that would still give us 1,000 pesos. So iba-iba lang na markup percentage, but the same percentages would give you 1,000 pesos na selling price. Okay, let's have some more practice. What is the markup percentage if the basis is full production cost? Ang full cost ay iba sa full production cost. But actually, ang full production cost is also the absorption cost. Okay, so markup percentage is equal to desired income, 100. Compute natin desired income plus... Ano mo ng denominator? Absorption. Ano yun? 200, 120, 80, at saka yung manufacturing overhead na 300. DM, DLOH. This one is OH. So the total of 700 again. So 200 po yung excluded. Nasaan yun? 100 na selling and administrative na variable and 100 na selling and administrative na fixed. So ang percentage natin is 42.86%. Again, the selling price is, kamukha nga po na absorption kanina, 142.86%. Multiply po natin ang 700 na basis. So the selling price is still 1,000 pesos. Ayan ha? Ayan ay kapag markup percentage ang sinabi. Okay, next. What is the markup percentage if the basis is prime cost? Ano nga uli yung prime cost? That is the sum of your... DM and your, parang DDM, DM and your DL. So nasa yung prime cost natin, direct materials of 200,000, direct labor of 120,000. So magkano yung total natin? 320,000. Ayan. So ngayon, ang markup percentage natin ay desired income of 100,000. 100? 100 na lang. Ayan. 100 over... 320. Ano yung nandito sa taas? Ay di itong 180 at saka itong 400. So ang total natin ay 580. So ilang percent to? 212.5%. Ayan. Ngayon, to get the selling price again, plus 1. So 312.5%. Mumultiply natin ang 320. So the answer is 1,000 pesos pa rin. Okay, those are the six items that will show you that uh, iba-iba markup percentages, pero that will still give you the selling price that would give you the desired income na 20% of your investment na 500,000. Ayan. Okay, so let's have this another problem. Sabi po dito, what price... Will the company charge if the firm uses cost plus pricing based on variable cost and a markup percentage of 130%? Ayan, so diretso selling price po tayo. Selling price is equal to, di ba markup percentage naman na? So kunin natin yung 130% plus 1. So 230%, tama? Mumultiply natin ng ano basis daw? Variable cost. At saka tayo pupunta sa mga given. Nasaan yung variable cost? It's 16. At saka... 20. So total of 
80 times 80. So the answer is 184 pesos. So that's number 7. Let's go to number 8. What price will the company charge if the company targets a return equal to 80% of variable manufacturing cost? Tingnan po yung difference, ha? Return na yung pinag-uusapan. Kunin muna natin yung return na pinag-uusapan natin, which is 80% of the variable manufacturing cost. Nasaan yun? Ito. 60. So the answer is 48, right? Return po yun. Eh ngayon, di ba sabi natin, magkano yung selling price natin? So that would be yung return plus yung total cost natin. Ano yung total cost natin? Kasi di ba sabi natin, this is the desired income, ito yung total cost. To make it happen na ito yung desired income, dapat na selling price mo is the sum of the return, the desired return, at saka yung total cost. Ang total cost mo natin pag in ay 135. So 48 plus 135, so that would give you 183 pesos. That's number 8. Okay? Let's go to number 9. Oh, what price ulit will the company charge if the firm uses cost plus pricing based on absorption manufacturing cost and a markup percentage of 120%? So ang selling price natin ay a markup percentage ang binigay. So 220% agad plus 1, di ba? Times. Anong basis natin? Yung absorption. Nasaan yung absorption? The variable manufacturing cost na 60 at saka yung fixed manufacturing cost. So ang total natin ay 100. Multiplyin natin ito ng 100 pesos. The answer is 220 pesos. So that's the answer in number 9. I hope nakikita natin yung difference sa kapag markup percentage na binigay at saka kapag return nyo binigay. Let's go to number 10. What price will the company charge if the company targets a return? Return na naman. Equal to 50% of full production cost. So let's compute for the return first. Magkano? 50% Oops, nagmukhang 80. So, the, so that's 50% of full production cost. Magkano yung full production cost? That is also your absorption. 60 at saka yung 40, di ba? Ito po yung full production cost. 100. So, ang return natin ay 50. Ayan. So, if that's the return, magkano yung selling price natin? Di ba? Pag return, add natin yung total cost na 135. So, with that, that's 50 plus the total cost of 135. So, the answer is 185 pesos. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. That's for number 10. Okay? Konti na lang ang ating mga problems. Let's move to number 11. Kamukha lang din naman. Practice lang tayo na konti. Para mas masanay tayo kapag may return or markup percentage. So sabi dito, so the head company manufactures office equipment and is ready to introduce a new line of portable copiers. The following copier data are available. So what price will the company charge if the firm uses cost plus pricing based on variable manufacturing cost and a markup percentage of 120%? So selling price, ang tinatanong, ay eh, given a markup percentage, lagay ka agad na 220%, di ba? Plus 1 times. Anong basis? Variable manufacturing cost. How much is that? That's 160 only. So times 160, so the answer in number 11 is, magkano po? 352 pesos. Alright, for number 12, what price will the company charge if the firm uses cost plus pricing based on total variable cost? Market percentage is 110. So ang selling price natin ay 210%, right? Times the variable cost. Total variable cost ay 160 at saka nasan pa isa? 40. So times 200. So the answer is 420 pesos. That's the answer in number 12. Yan. Kaya-kaya naman. So far. 
So let's go to number 13. Oops, markup percentage ulit ang tanong. Price ulit para lalo lang tayo masanay. So price is 240% kasi plus 1 times, 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 times. Uh, anong basis natin? Absorption. Ano yung absorption? It's the 160 and the or 40. So that would be, magkano po yun? 2... 100. Oh, mali ang tingin ko. Variable pala to. So, ito po ay mali, mali, mali. Erase, erase, erase ang sinabi. Take 2. Sabi natin, based on absorption cost, naduling na konti. Oops. Okay. Ayan. Oops. Anong nangyari? I hope that you can still see it. Malapit na tayo. Ayan. Salamat naman. So, ang basis po natin ay absorption cost. Variable manufacturing and, ap and applied fixed manufacturing. 160 and 80. So, ang total natin ay 240. So, 240% ng 240. So, that would be 576. Yan ang selling price natin. Okay. O, ito. Last problem na po ito. Itong numbers 14 and 15. This one is yung comparison ng cost plus pricing at saka na competitive sa isang problem. Pero madali pa rin naman to kaya kaya niyo pa rin to. Una muna sa number 14, based on the markup, the selling price of product A would be blank. Okay, so let's read the problem. So, Athens Corporation manufactures product A, which is used in the production of mountain bikes. For unit information about product A follows. So prevailing market price, 90. So that is the prevailing market price. Important yan mamaya. So we have the DMDL and overhead and selling and administrative expenses. Magkano yung total expenses natin? Yung, uh, that would be 40 plus 16 plus 12. That's uh, 28 plus 735. That's 75. That's the total cost natin. So Athens has traditionally used a 40% markup on total cost. Ayan, to arrive at reasonable selling price. The company, though, has noticed a sizable drop, drop in sales volume during the last few quarters, which it attributes to new entrants in the marketplace. Ayan. So based on the markup na 40% on total cost, magkano daw yung selling price? So SP is equal to 140% eh, ang total cost naman po natin ay 75%. So, magkano po ang selling price natin? That would be 105 pesos. So, ganda lang naman po. That's for number 14. Let's now go to the last item. Ang tanong dito, same problem yung mga nasa taas. Ang sabi lang dito sa number 15, if management desired to meet the prevailing market price, which is 90 pesos, and maintain the current rate on, of profit on sales, which is 40% markup on cost. What must happen to the company's total cost? Increase more, decrease, or by how much? Okay, so 90 daw po yan. Tapos, sabi na natin kanina, pa-work back tayo. Ima-minus natin this hard markup natin. Okay, so magkano yung cost natin dapat? If we divide 90 by 1.40, ang target cost po natin ay 75. Ngayon, mag, at 75 nga ba? 90 minus, hindi, 75 yung total natin dito na excite lang. So 90 divided by 1.4, so the answer is, ayun, 64.29. So, 64.29. Okay? Yan yung target cost natin. Ang tanong lang naman, what must happen to the company's total cost? So, dapat bumaba siya. By how much? From 75, magiging 64.29. So, dapat bumaba siya by 10.71. Okay? So that they can uh, use the competitive uh, pricing strategy, meaning they will be using the prevailing market price and maintaining the current uh, desired profit on sales. So what must happen? So baba, baba ba ng 10.71 yung cost natin. Okay. 
So that would be all for pricing decision. And for today, so that would be the transfer pricing kapag ang transaction ay within the organization. Uh, kapag pricing decision naman, pag ito naman ay papunta na sa customers natin. So thank you very much for attending today's session.